All right, so I'm going to do some questions for you. And I'll talk fast. Is Lyme and co-infections a cause for lupus? Not true lupus. True lupus is genetic, right? That's the double-stranded DNA. But you can get lupus-like markers, like ANA, anti-nuclear antibodies, and the rest. You can get autoimmune antibodies with Lyme production. Do you use a glutathione challenge before testing for mold toxins? If so, how much? Yes, I do. For mold toxins, I have people get into an infrared sauna or some form of sauna to start releasing the toxins. And I give them anywhere between one to two grams of liposomal glutathione a half hour to an hour before to make sure that I'm starting to pull them out into the urine. And by the way, we've done without saunas and glute and with. And I can tell you, we don't pick up the mold toxins if they don't sweat the toxins and take glute in some of the cases. That's a great question. For the healthcare providers, what is a high ratio of 125 to 25? What, what number is the cutoff? It's a two to one ratio. So let's say your 125 vitamin D was 50. Your 25 was 25, two to one ratio. That's what's implying intracellular infections. How do you differentiate on Igenix, Western blot, past exposure versus active illness? The only way that you can do that is we repeat the Western blots over time. So if I get a baseline Western blot and there's no 23 outer surface protein band and I repeat it a year later, and all of a sudden what you usually see is some of the bands go down, some of the bands go up. So if you have a Lyme specific band that is new, that is implying active infection. That's your immune system that's recognizing those Borrelia specific proteins. Now, if you don't have symptoms, remember, the whole point of what I told you today is you treat people, you don't treat blood tests. If I had somebody who came in with a positive Lyme test and were asymptomatic, I might decide to give them 30 days of doxycycline, but that's it. I'm not gonna treat them long term. Treat people, not blood tests. So it's very important as a take home message. What is the focus and progress of the government working group? Is there a hope for a successful marriage of the CDC, IDSA, and ILADS? You know, I, I just had an interesting visual on that one at a wedding chuppah where <laughs> We're all kind of holding hands and the rings are being exchanged. Um, you should know I am, I am the eternal optimist, even despite all of the politics. And I think you will be very happy. I can't give you too much details because the report, I just looked it up by the way, our report is 152 pages. That's for one subcommittee. That's our subcommittee. Wait till you see what's in this report. If you want hope, yes, read the report. Now I can't say what the other subcommittees did because I haven't read their reports. They're not up yet on the HHS site. But yes, this is the first time in our history as a country that we are having an open dialogue. And I can tell you there was great respect that I had for these researchers at university-based researchers. And see, we basically became friends and colleagues on this committee. I do think some positive things are going to happen. Okay, so I, I think there is hope based on what I'm seeing so far on the committee. No tick bite. What is the appropriate prophylaxis? So here, here's the thing. Number one, it depends on the type of tick. Is it a Lone Star tick? Is it an Ixodes tick? Is it a wood tick? Is it a dog tick? Right, because wood ticks and dog ticks transmit Rocky Mountain Spotted Fever, right, and certain other diseases. Lone Star ticks might transmit other things, right? So you have to know, of course, the type of tick, how long it was attached for. So as I said to you, there is tick transmission of some of these pathogens within 15 minutes, right? We talked about this. So doxy is the appropriate basically prophylactic, unless you have a severe tetracycline allergy, you can use Seftin in the summertime if you have to, but it is the appropriate prophylactic. Now the problem is, is that the one-dose doxy study that was done by Dr. Wormser, it was never a follow-up. So we don't use like, here's two doses of doxycycline, go home and you'll be fine. If you have a tick that's embedded, that's difficult to remove, or you might have squeezed, and I'm sure most of you know you don't put matches, gasoline, Vaseline, you don't put anything on the tick because it regurgitates from the salivary glands into your skin. You pull it straight out, there's tick twisters, there's tweezers, many ways to do it, but doxy is the prophylactic treatment. What we don't know at this point is how much exactly and how long. I will tell you that most of the time, I'm not gonna take a chance. If you've been a physician like me seeing sick Lyme patients, you're gonna give people at least 21 days of doxycycline, sometimes even a month, at least 100 twice a day. I'll sometimes even make believe they have Lyme and give them 200 twice a day because doxycycline at higher doses is what's called bactericidal. It kills. Doxycycline at lower doses is bacteriostatic. It inhibits the organism. 
your own immune system has to kill it. Okay? But we don't have enough research, but doxy is definitely the way to go. Including, as I said, young children and pregnancy. This is going to come out of our report. All groups. Children below eight years old. It's the older tetracyclines that cause the tooth staining. It was oxy and chlortetracycline. Doxy has never, this is where the mistake was made, it's never been associated with tooth staining with the enamel. Okay? There's several papers and resources in our paper that you're going to see about this. Okay? Chris Paddock from the CDC, who's a, a Rickettsial researcher, he was really highlighting this, and I make sure I make sure his message is being pushed out. Okay, because there are children, 10 to 15% of the fatalities from Rocky Mountain Spotted Fever every year are in children because the pediatricians are afraid to give doxycycline. Okay, so short courses are safe. Okay, and if you don't give doxy, by the way, within the first five days, rickettsial infections could be fatal. They're non-specific. that's the problem. Flu-like symptoms, aches and pains, fevers, myalgias, muscle pain, even experienced physician, you cannot tell some of these tick-borne disorders early on. You have to have a high clinical suspicion. Were you exposed? Were you hiking? Right? You've got to make a clinical you know, decision on when you're going to give this out. I've been reading about infrared saunas as a treatment. Can you speak about it? So I have one in my basement. And the reason I think they're very useful is all of these environmental toxins getting in, um, they can be effectively sweated out through the system. And Lyme has heat shock proteins. The Borrelia bugs hate the heat. I've seen people who feel much better getting an infrared sauna on a regular basis. So it's good for circulation. It's good for the cardiovascular system. It's good for environmental toxins. And from what I've seen, it seems to benefit a lot of the Lyme patients who take it. Antibiotics, how long? <laughs> so that's an individual decision. So here's the thing. The prior ILADS guidelines used to be you treat until people are two months symptom. It's individualized, right? If someone is getting better, they're at 85, 90% of normal, you're not necessarily gonna keep throwing atom bomb antibiotics at them for long periods of time, right? Use herbal protocols. But the point is, my protocols every year are shifting in my practice. I'm using more of these persister drugs and biofilm busters because I've been doing this for over 30 years. I know that the classic regimens work, but it comes back when you stop treatment. I'm looking for a cure. I'm looking for a short course that's going to knock this thing out. And so far as a physician researcher doing this, the doxy rifampin dapsone protocol is the closest, sometimes mixed with pyrazinamide, is the closest I have seen to knocking this thing down. Whether it's out or not is another story. I'm really curious to see these people who finish this new protocol, but it's very variable. Once you're significantly better, go to natural herbal protocols. You don't keep people on long-term antibiotics because of the microbiome of the gut, right? And, and by the way, regarding microbiome, Saccharomyces boulardii has been shown to stop C. diff diarrhea. We use two to 300 billion of good CFUs of probiotics, at least three different probiotics twice a day. One of them is Saccharomyces boulardii. If you were given six weeks of doxy in September of 2017, is it possible you could get shoulder and knee pain now, but no other symptoms? Yes. Can Lyme stay dormant in the body and relapse? Absolutely. Absolutely. The key again is that migratory pain. And it would be unusual to just have one symptom. Not that it's impossible, but, but it could happen. What is your opinion of ozone therapy? So ozone is an oxidative therapy. I don't use a lot of oxidative therapies because most of what you saw me talk about is antioxidants to shut down inflammation. But is oxidative therapy useful? Absolutely. When you're driving a car, you don't just put your foot on the brake. You've got to put your foot on the gas too. So oxidative therapies and antioxidants, both are useful. So yes, we've seen some people get better with it, but again, we need, and, and I'm, I'm gonna argue with, you know, at some point, now that I finally have contacts in the NIH and the rest, the Office of Alternative Medicine needs to be doing these kind of clinical studies. Those of you who wanna do IV ozone or ozone through many different you know, pathways or there's many other natural things, there's no reason this can't be done in a scientific format, being studied by the NIH, and it should be because you want to know what's efficacious and what's safe. And I'm going to be kind of speaking to people about this in the future. Can you talk about the Cowden protocol and side effects? I did a study with Nutramedics years ago. We found that the protocol was effective in 70% of our patients for Lyme. Fatigue, headaches, joint pain, memory. Cemento Banderol, Eva Shapi took it under the microscope, University of New Haven, killed Borrelia. 
Okay? We use cemento and banderol all the time. We use it with biofilm busters like stevia. And the stevia I use, by the way, is Nutramedics. When they looked at different stevia compounds, they found that that was the one that turned out the best in culture for the biofilms. But generally, Cowden protocol is a helpful protocol, but that doesn't mean you're not going to get Herxheimer reactions. You can get Herxes from Cowden, you can get it from Byron White, you can get it from the Booner protocol, right? They all can cause Herxes. What natural treatments are available? Well, we actually just talked about that. So the, the ones that I use most often is traditional Chinese medicine. Coptis Houdiana, very effective. Cowden, Cemento Bandrol. Byron White, AL, ABARD, okay? Some of the Booner protocols, Andrographis, Japanese Nopoli. There's a lot of good natural protocols out there, and they are helpful. But remember, you still have to go through the 16-point MSIDS map. If your hormones are imbalanced, your autonomic nervous system's not working, the herbs are not gonna do it, right? It's just one approach. One more. How about is neural line curable? So here's the thing, and I was telling you about this on the slides. If you ask me, do people who come in with chronic memory concentration problems and brain fog and headaches and dizziness and all the neurological symptoms, do I get those people so that they have absolutely no neurological symptoms whatsoever? Yes, and some. The way the protocols work is some get mildly better, some get moderately better, some are significantly better, some are symptom free, but the thing about neurological Lyme, what I think you need to keep in mind, they found that the Lyme spirochetes are under biofilms. So you have to keep in mind that liposomal preparations, as we talked about, with biofilm busters, and not just dealing with one bug, right, co-infections, because remember when you're dealing with neural Lyme, all the neurological Lyme I see pretty much is Lyme and co-infections, but it's also Lyme co-infections and environmental toxins. 70% of my patients with neurological Lyme symptoms get better with glutathione, right? They may get better with pulling out mold, they get better with pulling out metals. So when talking neural Lyme, remember, you've got to go back to overlapping sources of inflammation that are driving the inflammatory process. So that's, I'll, I'll be around, by the way. Um, okay, they're going to be announcing it. Should we finish off by singing the tick song? Yeah, you want, you want to sing the tick song? Can you, can you get this up on the screen? The of the deer tail. So by the way, when we finished the group yesterday from HHS, I decided to send that to all my committee members yesterday afternoon to celebrate the five o'clock deadline of furiously working to get this document done. Please feel free to sing along. By the way, I did this with Daryl Hall from Hall & Oates, from those of you who have not seen this. Um, Daryl was in my office one day and I took out my guitar and played this and he laughed so hard he said, come on. Please. Clyde came to my office one bright sunny day Said, Doc, come in an awful bad way Said, 19 docs and I'm almost dead All they can tell me is it's in my head Doctor, please help me, please I said, Clyde, can you tell me what you did in life That caused you all this terrible strife Said, Doc, I was with my beautiful wife The woods one day enjoying life Lay down on the ground and we fooled around before you knew when I was ill, just found. From that day onward, I've been going downhill. Can you give me a lotion or a potion or a magic pill? Doctor, please help me, please. I'm gonna pick off the tick real quick before the devil gets within. You guys know the words? Time for the lie to steal my mind. I sure could use it for a little more time. It hurts over here, it hurts over there, it hurts in places everywhere. It hurts in my fingers and it hurts in my toes. It hurts in places where nobody goes. I said, Clyde, this is your lucky day. I know why you're feeling in such a bad way. The night in the shower, did you check to see if there's anything attached to the back of your knee? Or anywhere else, or anywhere else. I think you know what I mean. Did you notice a mite or a bite or a tick or a ring or any such unusual thing? To shake, quake, get hot or cold before your illness really took hold. He looked at me with a tear in his eye and let out one enormous sigh. Said, Doc, I remember some unusual rash on my nose and my toes and when nobody goes. 
Take off and take real quick before the devil gets within. Grind for the mind to steal my mind. You sure could use it for a little more time. It hurts over here, it hurts over there. It hurts in places everywhere. It hurts in my fingers and it hurts in my toes. It hurts in places where nobody goes. I say, Clyde, this is not chronic fatigue, fibromyalgia, systemic lupus, trigeminal neuralgia, halitosis, multiple sclerosis, or any hocus pocus diagnosis. It's about time you got testing for Lyme. It'll be wiser to check your ELISA. It'll be easier to treat your babesia. Once we show your H and O, the proof they need, the proof they need. Just pray it's positive, you'll be lucky indeed. Come and pick off the tick real quick before the devil gets within. Crime for lying to steal my mind, you sure could use it for a little more time. It hurts over here, it hurts over there, it hurts in places everywhere. It hurts in my fingers and it hurts in my toes, it hurts in places where nobody goes. Nobody goes, nobody knows, nobody knows, nobody Let me know if I quit my day job, okay? Thank you everyone for coming.